My talk today kind of takes at its basis an idea um, created by um, the scholar Ken Alder about the idea of thick things, that there are certain things that kind of collect meanings and collect interpretations and sort of play multiple roles in the cultural world. Um, and I think cheese is one of those. And I do think it's a bit of an irony that the sort of like runnier and stinkier the cheese, the thicker it is in terms of its meanings. Uh, and I specifically look in this at the ways that in particularly 18th and 19th century Russia, cheese played a role within Russian history as both um, a commodity that was traded across borders. Um, there is not really a strong indigenous Russian tradition of aged cheese making. There's tvorog. There is tvorog, which is a fresh cheese that is um, ubiquitous. It's eaten many different foods. It's eaten on its own. But there's not really a tradition of cured cheeses or aged cheeses. Uh, but that became a major part of sort of the Russian world of trade. Maybe major is a little bit too strong, but a notable part of the Russian world of trade in the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, so I look at that question of how, what role it played in the world of trade. I look at the rise of just the idea of a taste for cheese, because these cheeses were not necessarily things that everybody automatically liked, uh, particularly some of them. The most famous is Limburger cheese, which is super stinky. Um, but the taste for Limburger is seen as a sign of a refined palate, so there's sort of class dimensions to all of this. And then I look at the, the efforts to create cheese in Russia, to make Russian versions of Swiss cheese, or French cheese, or Dutch cheese, or English cheese, starting again in the late 18th century and through into the 19th century. Um, and in particular, I think this is a really interesting point in thinking about cheese beyond Russia as a sort of transnational commodity. Cheese bears all of these different ideas, and it's something that you can see back in the 19th century, which is when the bulk of my research takes place. Uh, but of course, you can also see that much more recently in Russia, there's been a lot of recent foreign policy, not foreign policy, well, kind of foreign policy things about cheese. So uh, after sort of Western powers placed sanctions on Russia, Russia created counter sanctions in which they stopped importing certain foods, um, and cheese was one of the most famous of the foods that were uh, not no longer to be imported. Uh, and this has really created so many interesting things. There was a lot of laments in that first year, I would say, uh, which is sort of 2014 into 2015, um, sort of worry about the sudden lack of cheeses that people had become you know, used to. Uh, and I, I remember I went to Russia in the summers of both 2014 and 15, and there were some really fascinating conversations about cheese. Uh, I have a, a, a friend in, in Moscow uh, who I always stay with when I go to Moscow. And when I first showed up um, after the counter sanctions had been, she's like, we have to go look at the cheese. She took me to the grocery store to show me, like, we have to look and see where all of this came from. And there were things that said yellow. She's like, yellow hmm. uh, And there were so many rumors about cheese going on in that first year. There was one of the rumors was that the cheese being produced in Russia was filled with palm oil and therefore it was super unhealthy and things like that. Uh, then there was the burning of the cheese in 2015 when confiscated cheese was incinerated and that became a giant storm of publicity, particularly abroad, I think. And I will say that one of the things is that there's so much more cheese being produced in Russia now and by at least some accounts, um, although that cheese production was maybe not entirely successful in the immediate uh, year or so after the counter sanctions that over the next several years there's been so much effort put into creating better cheese in Russia that it has actually sort of succeeded. Um, there was, I remember reading an article from about there saying like the, the holy grail or the thing that everybody really wanted was to make a good Russian Parmesan. I think that's the still real goal is to do a real Russian Parmesan. Um, I'm not sure that that has quite been met, but the numbers of cheeses being domestically produced has just skyrocketed, and it's sort of fascinating to see all of the different ways that they're being uh, not just produced, but displayed in stores or in kiosks or in special shops. It's become this sort of fascinating, um, almost like public relations specific thing about like this is our success of creating these cheeses right now. So it's been fascinating to to watch. Um, it's sometimes fascinating to try. <laughs>